Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Galactica, which is a large language model for science. Let's get started. Let's get started with the question. What is Galactica? In short, Gal model. It's a large language model that can actually store, combine and reason about scientific knowledge. Uh, in fact, there have been other previous such large language models that have been built for scientific encoding like Cybert and BioLM. Uh, uh, GAL uh, specifically has been trained on a very large scientific corpus consisting of 106 billion tokens, which have been extracted from 48 million papers, textbook and uh, lecture notes, millions of compounds and proteins, scientific websites, encyclopedias, reference material, knowledge bases, and many, many other sources. It's a combination of several scientific sources. Uh, it is actually proven to be better than many recent existing models on a large range of scientific tasks. For example, uh, it has been shown to beat GPT-3 uh, in predicting uh, uh, LaTeX equations. On reasoning task, it actually beats uh, uh, the state of the art chinchilla model on MMLU uh, uh, benchmark, mathematical MMLU benchmark. It beats uh, Palm on math. Uh, it is state of the art on some of these benchmarks like PubMed QA and Med MCQA. Uh, it also beats Bloom and OPT 175 billion on Big Bench benchmark. Right. To know more about this, you can actually also go to galactica.org or, or read this paper. Right. So uh, Galactica is actually based on something called as prompt pre-training. So while it does the usual pre-training that is required for large language models, it also does something called as prompt pre-training. Okay. So in fact, uh, for learning large language models, there are these four different ways of doing that. Right? There is a pre-training that one can do, prompt pre-training, instruction tuning, and fine tuning. Okay. And the idea is that uh, as you go from pre-training to fine tuning, you are sort of increasing the task specialization. Uh, while if you basically are doing more of pre-training, it's more of task generalization. So it's it's for general tasks. Now, uh, so what is prompt pre-training? So prompt pre-training basically means that you include prompts in pre-training as well alongside general corpora. Right? Uh, so pre-training as such essentially weighs all tokens equally as part of the self-supervised loss. It's not task specific at all, so therefore it uses self-supervised loss and weighs all tokens equally. This basically means that it is a weak signal for tasks of interest and actually it, it basically therefore requires model to be very large in size. Right? On the other hand, in recently what has become popular is this instruction tuning which is basically passing in prompts which are specific to the kinds of tasks while you are doing uh, uh, training, right? Uh, so instruction tuning sort of boosts the performance on specific tasks, but post hoc, of course, uh, and it can sort of generalize to unseen tasks of interest, but it sort of risks performance in those unseen tasks uh, that are different from the instruction set tasks, right? Until the tasks are from the instruction set, it performs well, otherwise it sort of, uh, it, it may not work that well, right? Now, uh, prompt pre-training is somewhere in between. So why prompt pre-training? Because of course, uh, it sort of helps the GAL model, the Galactica model, to actually boost performance at even lower scales, as we will see in the later part of this video. Uh, given that fine-tuning actually requires expertise, making the model just work out of the box for, uh, for traditional tasks like uh, question answering and summarization is actually nice. So uh, the idea is that you, while pre-training itself, you supply those prompts for question answering and summarization. And yay, uh, you know, even the pre-trained model is actually good enough to do question answering and summarization without requiring any fine tuning, right? And uh, while you're doing prompt pre-training, we're actually maximizing the generality of the model while boosting performance on some specific tasks of interest. So what are the data sets used to pre-train Galactica? So as we discussed, Galactica uses both the typical pre-training using a large bunch of data sets and also prompt pre-training. So overall, the pre-training data set contains 106 billion tokens, and uh, uh, they come from several kinds of data sources like papers, code, reference material, knowledge bases, a common crawl, uh, prompts, and some other scientific sources. Right. So if you look at papers, uh, it basically comprises about 83% of Galactica, and the papers come from several kinds of sources, uh, including archive, PMC, PubMed, BioArchive, MedArchive, ACL, ChemArchive, and so on. So several large data sources, right? Uh, 
Uh, if you look at uh, uh, code, well, the code has been taken from academic GitHub repos, uh, which have been linked from papers with code website uh, on topics like machine learning, physics, mathematics, statistics, and astronomy. If you care for reference material, well, that has been taken from several other interesting sources like Wikipedia, Stack Exchange, uh, Wikibooks, Wiki University, Khan Academy, papers with code, and so on. Right? It has also been taken from IUPAC Goldbook, which is chemistry related. Um, the knowledge bases, well, again, knowledge bases are uh, uh, around chemistry, around uh, uh, biology, uh, you know, uh, so all, all kinds of these knowledge bases. Uh, uh, you know, common crawl, again, scientific part of the common crawl and academic part of the academic part of the common crawl has been used. A filtered common crawl corpus has also been used to pre-train Galactica. So overall, Galactica actually is pre-trained on data related to several modalities. It is still more or less traditional text, but well, uh, it's it's text in different formats. So it's a typical running text, it's a LaTeX text, it's code-based text, it's a, uh, it's it's a chemical text in terms of the smiles format. So smiles is a popular format which is used to express molecules and compounds, those formulas in a sta standard string format. It's amino acid sequences, DNA sequences, and so on. So, uh, so it's sort of multimodal in that sense. Uh, and about the prompts, right? So, uh, yes, I mean, uh, there are several kinds of prompts which are used. So prompts related to question answering, prompts related to summarization, entity extraction, reasoning, dialogue, uh, chemical properties, and so on at pre-trained time. Remember, these are pre-training prompts which have been used to pre-train Galactica. Now, since there are different modes of data which have been used to pre-train Galactica, how is this pre-train data tokenized? Right. So um, uh, there are different forms of tokenization which are used for different modes, and let me talk about them one by one. So the simplest ones are numbers. So uh, and and mathematics. So for mathematical things, you split the sky operations into individual characters. So plus minus percent, everything is treated as an individual character. Uh, you also split the digits into individual tokens for numbers. So you take a number and then you basically convert into digits like that. For smiles formula, which are for chemical compounds, you basically wrap with these special tokens, start smiles and end smiles. And then, uh, you know, uh, you essentially take the smile representation and split it character by character. So this character based tokenization. Okay. Amino acids and DNA sequences are also similar. You actually wrap them with special tokens, start and end tokens, and also do character based tokenization. For uh, certain tasks, which are step-by-step -step reasoning tasks, you essentially uh, wrap uh, the uh, the working, uh, you know, wrap some part of it using something called as a working memory token. So uh, it's sort of so. For example, here is the here is an example, and uh, if you notice, this is the prompt actually, and uh, the answer is just this much. Okay, so it's about a physics question. Uh, and uh, the idea is that while you are doing, while you're trying to solve this physics question, sometimes you also use a scratch pad so as to essentially have a working external memory where you can write things. Think of this uh, working memory as a similar thing. So uh, while the question is given as part of the prompt, you also give this working memory as part of the prompt, which is basically the way you would try to solve this question, right? And then come up with an answer. So this working memory essentially is uh, encapsulated in this uh, start work and end work tokens. And uh, uh, then what you have is uh, essentially uh, uh, the the code, uh, uh, I mean, the, the formula that one would use to, to solve this problem, and also Python code, which is automatically generated. Okay. Now, um, uh, so these kinds of uh, working uh, memory part of the entire prompt is either generated programmatically uh, by creating sort of a problem template and then sampling the variables and so on, or it is sourced online. So for example, in Khan problems, this working memory part is also explicitly mentioned, so you could use it so as to uh, do pre-training with this working memory kind of thing. Okay. So uh, further, um, you know, this is another example how to handle uh, tokenization for citations, right? So for citation kind of text, um, uh, you uh, essentially wrap uh, with startref and endref tokens. So if there was a citation here, you would start with startref and end with endref. And uh, what do you see here? Well, you see the name of the paper, right? So in fact, they use two types of citation identifiers. One is paper titles and the other is alphanumeric IDs, IDs right? So, so the title-based identifiers actually have a greater citation prediction accuracy uh, than IDs. I mean, uh, citation prediction is one of the uh, end uh, downstream tasks for this kind of a model. 
So, well, they observe the title based identifiers actually give you better accuracy. However, paper titles are also more prone to hallucination at especially at lower scales. Right? So therefore, um, you know, uh, there's a straight off, but then, um, you know, since the accuracy is larger, they still go ahead and use title based identifiers. Now, the architecture of Galactica. Well, Galactica is a decoder only transformer. So there are some small modifications to it, but then majorly it's a decoder only transformer. It uses GLU activation, 2048 length context window, larger context window so because the prompts are larger as well for various tasks. Uh, no biases, only weights, no biases for those neurons, uh, learned positional embeddings and 50K token PP vocabulary. It has been trained for 4.25 epochs uh, and given the large amount of data. Well, it has been trained for 450 billion tokens. It has been trained using Metasec library, which is uh, one of the Facebook's, uh, you know, library from Facebook research. Uh, training requires large compute. So 128 A100 ATGB nodes were used for the largest Galactica model, but inference requires just one single A100 machine, which is nice, right? So there are five brothers in the Galactica family. Well, uh, so 125 million, the smallest model, to 120 billion, the largest model, uh, going all the way from 12 um, decoder layers to 96 decoder layers, and then the D model also sort of differs across across the different uh, um, different different sizes. Okay. Um, let's look at how does it perform. So let's look at uh, various tasks uh, on which Galactica uh, performs really well. So this is the task where you essentially give as prompt uh, the formula for Bessel's differential equation is, right? So the prompt is the name of an equation, and then the un expected answer is uh, LaTeX uh, for the equation, right? And uh, uh, this task has been evaluated on 434 equations across chemistry, maths, physics, stats, and economics. And as you observe, compared to various other baseline models like OPT, Bloom, GPT-3, people have observed uh, that uh, 120 billion gal performs significantly better across uh, across all of these different uh, uh, different different uh, uh, subjects right now people can also do uh, domain probes using galactica in some ways uh, sort of question answering so you could basically um, uh, you know uh, for example uh, predict the uh, products of the reaction by uh, actually um, supplying a description of the reaction along with the uh, along with the along with the reactants, right? So essentially, if I take uh, NaCl and H2SO4, what do I get, right? So that's that. So that's one of the probes. Similarly, you could actually have other kinds of probes for amino probes, so amino acid kind of things, um, uh, or you could have, uh, um, you know, other chemical reaction probes like the spot peptide bond cleavage uh, occur on the carbonyl side or the amino acid for trypsin. Uh, you could also have a galaxy cluster kind of probes. Uh, you know, uh, Abel 370 is a galaxy located in which constellation in some ways, right? Or you could also have mineral groups kind of probes, right? So there are several kinds of such uh, domain specific probes that one can come up with. And people have observed that again, GAL models give you very good accuracy compared to the other baseline models, OPT, Bloom, GPT-3. The Galactica model also performs nicely for reasoning tasks. So they have, you know, they evaluated on two different benchmarks, MMLU and math benchmark. So on MMLU benchmark, Galactica was evaluated using, uh, without using any few short samples, while all the baselines actually used few short samples, five short basically, right? So, but even then, uh, you know, Galactica model performed reasonably well compared to any of these baseline models. You know, on average, you see the best baseline is 35.7 while uh, Galactica one, uh, 120 billion is about 35.8. However, with the work token included, Galactica model just gets significantly better, right? That's that. Now, uh, on the, um, uh, you know, uh, on, on the math benchmark, if you observe, uh, here are the results. And again, these results are across different parts of math, so algebra and, uh, uh, and, and so on, geometry and so on, right? And what you observe is that compared to baseline models, uh, um, so, so here they also experimented with supplying work token as part of the prompt versus supplying a, a five short chain of thought prompt token, right? Uh, a, a chain of thought prompt, right? And uh, they observed that uh, um, uh, that uh, in general the Galactica model performs uh, better uh, with uh, uh, with with this five short, uh, you know, uh, five short uh, 
chain of thought prompt clearly because it has it has uh, it has this uh, extra few short prompting so it should surely work better however uh, the interesting part to observe is that the galactica 30 billion model outperforms uh, uh, 540 billion palm model also so if you look at uh, this one 12.7 is better than 8.8 .8 in general so so clearly the minerva model this one is way better because it has been also uh, it's it's first 540 billion it's five short and it has been fine tuned specifically for latex right so therefore this one is way better but if you basically look at those which are base models not fine tuned for latex you know you observe that a 30 billion uh, galactica model outperforms um, you know uh, 18 times larger uh, palm model um, on 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 both kind of prompts work prompt as well as five shot m cord prompt okay <coughs> galactica has also been evaluated on big bench and mmlu tasks so mmlu tasks are mathematical tasks scientific tasks in that sense uh, as you observe, uh, there are these uh, algebra related tasks, college, high school level tasks, engineering oriented tasks, uh, um, and, and so on, several tasks. And uh, what people have observed is that uh, uh, here, in fact, Galactica has been evaluated compared to baselines. Galactica is actually zero, uh, zero shot. So Galactica does not have any few shot examples, while baselines are all five shot. Uh, except uh, op except uh, basically uh, GPT-3, which is zero shot. Um, um, and and bloom on uh, on PubMed QA, uh, you know these two tasks where it is zero shot. But then uh, PubMed QA and BioASQ, uh, PubMed QA and BioASQ, where bloom is zero shot. But everything else is uh, all the baselines are five shot in that sense. Right? Still, Gal performs well on so many interesting tasks. In fact, uh, um, what is observed is that uh, Chinchilla actually performs better on high school subjects and college subjects. Uh, which are less mathematical and more memorization oriented while galactic actually tends to perform better on um, a graduate level task uh, that has to do also with the kind of pre-training data that has been used uh, for you know a lot of papers based data that has been used to train galactica model uh, people also evaluated galactica on 57 big bench task and they observed that it performs uh, way better on big bench task compared to the existing baselines opt uh, blue model and so on so in fact uh, uh, Gal 30 billion is approximately the same as uh, in performance, the same as OPT 175 billion model, which is a way larger model. Right? Um, now for citation prediction, so the idea here is that you want to predict citations given an input context. So if I take this as the prompt, I want to predict what is the right citation to put in, and hey, this is the citation that I want expect in the output, which is what I get as part of prediction. Right? So. Uh, people use uh, three different data sets for this for, for this evaluation of citation prediction. Um, you know, they contain a few hundreds to thousands of uh, examples, right? Uh, and uh, the comparison has been done using uh, these baselines, sparse retriever and dense retriever baselines. Well, these baselines are, uh, so sparse retriever is basically um, elastic search based, uh, just, just uh, you know, TF-IDF oriented or uh, essentially OCAP-ABM25 oriented search where the idea is you index uh, uh, references, uh, that is titles, abstracts, and short snippets of text from the papers. And then when a input uh, context comes in, you do some sort of similarity search and return the results from Elasticsearch. Dense retrieval basically is about uh, representing these things using embeddings. So you encode the reference, uh, you know, uh, title abstract uh, using uh, uh, some sort of embeddings. And then you also encode the same using uh, the, the, the input context using embeddings. And then you retrieve nearest neighbors using uh, face index, right? So even on this task, we observe that uh, across all the three data sets, essentially um, uh, GAL 120 billion is hands down better compared to any of these baselines. Right. So let's look at uh, quickly look at uh, GAL performance on chemical understanding and biological understanding tasks. On chemical understanding tasks, uh, uh, there are uh, two interesting tasks that uh, these guys focused on. One is IUPAC name prediction. So the idea is, uh, the input is this miles representation of a chemical compound and the output should be the name of the compound. So in this particular case, the input is this string, which basically talks about what carbon items, oxygen items, nitrogen items, and so on are there. And you want to predict things like methyl 2, cyclohexyl 2, 2 dimethyl propanol, amino methyl, thiazol 4 carboxylate. Okay. Now the idea is uh, that well, they experimented with 17,000 plus compounds. And uh, what they observed is that uh, the accuracy improves with the scale, smoothly increases with the scale. Uh, 
um, and invalid names, of course, decrease as you scale the size of the model. The interesting part is that uh, while you are generating this name step by step, token by token, they observe that uh, each token sort of uh, focuses on the right part of the chemical compound. So, for example, when generating amino, it it's sort of focused on uh, uh, on on uh, this NH2 substituent part, right? Uh, similarly, when generating thiazole, it's sort of focused nicely on the sulfur item that you see there. So, it sort of seemed to be doing the right thing. Of course, there is a lot to improve in the accuracy, but uh, uh, it's still it's still pretty good in terms of being able to at least come up with some baseline number. Drug discovery is a very important task, and uh, can we sort of express it as a natural in a natural language format to explore that? Uh, these folks actually took uh, by uh, uh, actually took molecule net classification benchmarks, which involves uh, these uh, few data sets across biophysics and physiology, uh, and they express those classification tasks as a natural language uh, in in a natural language format. So, uh, for example, here is a uh, here is a prompt. Here's a smiles formula, and uh, the question is, will the chemical compound penetrate the blood band, blood brain barrier? Right, and the expected answer is no. Similarly, here is a sequence for a protein, and here is an isomeric smiles for a compound. Will the chemical compound be active against this protein? So you you want to typically answer those questions as part of drug discovery, and what has been found is that yes, GL120 billion model uh, is uh, for sure better compared to all of those other GAL models. Now it's not as good as let's say unimole model, but unimole model is a specialist model which has been trained not just or not not on the smiles format, but on the 3D function, 3D format. Remember, getting the 3D format for chemicals is is pretty complex by itself. But well, unimole model basically makes use of 3D format so as to get uh, better accuracy. So that's that. And also unimole model has been trained using uh, 10 times more number of molecules compared to this Galactica model uh, fine tuning. Now let's quickly talk about biological understanding for the GAL model, Galactica model, um, and uh, specifically talk about two problems here, uh, functional keyword prediction and protein function description. So in functional keyword prediction, the idea is that uh, you provide as input uh, this part, right? You provide as input this part, the sequence, the amino acid sequence, and then ground. Uh, oh, of course, you don't provide ground truth keywords. So you basically, just provide uh, uh, you know the amino acid sequence, and you expect it to be able to predict keywords. So these are the keywords predicted from Galactica, and these are the ground truth keywords. As you see, they match so much, right? So that's that's the nice part. In fact, F1 was used as a measure to compute accuracy, and people observe that uh, in general across uh, several data sets. Galactica model, uh, the, the performance scales with the size of the model. Right? Now, protein function description is about giving an amino acid sequence and then being able to come up with a natural language description. So this is not classification problem. It's more of a natural language description problem. You describe um, uh, basically what the sequence could be used for. So again, as you observe, the ground truth and the prediction sounds uh, pretty similar, seems pretty similar. Uh, in this cherry picked example, of course, but in general, as you observe, um, you know, in general, um, across different data sets, the Rugel score for uh, this uh, free form uh, for this text generation problem is actually increasing as you increase the size of the model. Okay. Lastly, let me talk about the toxicity and bias of Galactica. So Galactica, it turns out, is significantly less biased and less toxic compared to other existing language models. So uh, people have compared Galactica with Text DaVinci 002 and uh, from OpenAI and OPT 175 billion model, and uh, across different types of biases uh, on the CROS uh, pairs benchmark, people have observed that Galactica is is much less biased. Of course, on some parameters, it you know it shows a slightly higher bias compared to Text DaVinci 002, but then mostly it is less biased, right? Um, so, so cross S pairs benchmark is basically a benchmark of uh, 1,008 crowdsourced pairs of sentences, and one of them is more biased, the other is less biased. And uh, an ideal language model should basically give equal probability of generation uh, to both the both the sentences in that census. Right. So, therefore, anything close to uh, close to 50 is is better essentially. So, so that's that. And what you observe is that in most cases, Galactica. Uh, is is closer to 50 compared to the baseline models. Right? 
Stereo set is another benchmark so as to measure um, a stereo st a stereotypical biases across a profession, religion, gender, and race. So, and uh, across all of these, uh, well, uh, this particular stereo set benchmark contains 2100 examples and it sort of uh, computes three scores. Uh, an ideal unbiased language model should have uh, an LM score of 100 and a stereotype, a stereotype score of 50 and an ICAT score of 100. So what you observe is that the Galactica model actually nicely obtains these, these scores as expected uh, compared to uh, the, the other two baselines. Yeah. So, okay, so let me now summarize this video. So here we talked about uh, Galactica. And Galactica is a large language model that can store, combine, and reason over, over, over scientific text. It is trained on a very large corpus, 106 billion tokens, 48 million documents, scientific corpus. Well, this is not as large as uh, uh, the corpus which is used for other kinds of baseline models, but uh, very, very focused scientific corpus. It uses uh, prompt pre-training for the first time. Uh, it follows decoder-only transformer architecture, and uh, there are five different Galactica models uh, starting from 125 million all the way to 120 billion. It performs really well on several scientific tasks like generating LaTeX equations, question answering, reasoning, big bench benchmark, MMLU benchmark, citation prediction, chemical understanding, biological understanding. It is less toxic, less biased compared to existing large language models, and you can look at galactica.org. Uh, to see more examples of how Galactica performs. Thank you for watching. Hope you like the video. Here is my here is a link to connect with me on LinkedIn, and that's my homepage.